Hello everyone, welcome graphic designer slash artist slash animator slash whatever you want to call me here. Today, we're going to be doing something quite fun. We're going to be looking at logos. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I, I love logo design. I, I'm a huge fan of, of looking at things and logos are a great thing to look at. So I thought, you know what? Let's review the logos from the Nintendo Direct, specifically the Nintendo ones, and see how good they are and rate them from, you know, S to F or whatever tier list crap you guys love. Oh, I love tier list, guys. Anyways, I'm gonna be looking at logos. Let's begin. First logo we have is Mario and Luigi Brothership. Now this logo is pretty cool. It's got Mario, it's got Luigi, it's got an and symbol. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent logo. My only critique or thing which I'm not a huge fan of is the, the actual Brothers logo because, but also we don't know that much about it, but the, the choice of colors here, bit confusing currently. Obviously the gold slash yellow could be electricity because we're not theming with, with that in regards to it. It feels very safe and also rejuvenating for the series because previously, again, we haven't had a new Mario Luigi game since 2015 with Paper Jam and even that was like crap. So like we haven't had a real game since like 2013 with the Dream Team or Dream Team Brothers as I should say. In case you guys didn't realize in Europe, and European countries, in PAL regions, I should say, we had Dream Team Bros or Paper Jam Bros. Nintendo just always put bros in front of the titles in the UK, which was sort of funny. But here, it's not Brothership Bros, it's just Brothership. So that's sort of exciting. And when you compare this logo to the other games in the series, you can see a very obvious evolution of it. Starting off with Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga and Mario and Luigi Partners in Time, we sort of entered that initial <laughs> logo a little bit bright with Luigi specifically. It's a little bit cartoon. And it also uses the old Mario logo system. This wasn't like a brand new logo or brand new font used for the series. This is already pre-existing font used in loads of Mario games. You can see it in Mario Kart, in a bunch of spin-offs. And yeah, it's not that crazy. It's just got a bit of a big old outline. Superstar Saga looks really good. I really like how that how that font works and also and i should say and also the and sign is very very different to what you'd expect it's a little three or a little e with like lines above it i've done this a couple times just to make it look cool but i only knew about doing it like this from from these logos so yeah and then in partners in time it's sequel they desaturated the colors and sort of i think balance the logo out a lot more and i really really like this i think this just goes to sh and i really really like this a lot more because i think it just balances the logo a lot more and also in terms of color usage, the use of white really makes Mario and Luigi stand out a lot more. I think in the last logo, you were sort of all over the place in terms of a graphic design with it. Something I do like about both of these, and I think it's more prominent in Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, is that every color covers Mario and Luigi's outfits. We've got red for Mario, obviously, green for Luigi, obviously. We've got blue for their overalls, and we have yellow for their accent colors, because they both have like yellow on their chests. Two big yellow nipples. But yeah, both of these are pretty good. And then we can see it evolves into this and this is more so the modern logo of the Mario and Luigi series we finally got their own sort of style with it uh, it's a lot more bubbly it's a lot more fun and we also added these little icons of Mario and Luigi walking on the top of them which is super super cute uh, you can even see where Luigi's little sock would be in the Bowser's Inside Story logo at least and similar to Superstar Saga but I think it's done a lot better here Bowser's Inside Story again that color sort of represents again Mario and Luigi's golden nipples but also Bowser because Bowser was a big prominent role in this game obviously you play it as him and it's like one of the best games ever made if you haven't played Bowser's Inside Story leave that's mean I should be mean play the game and obviously all the logos like look like bones and stuff with Bowser's Inside Story super fun super cute Dream Team obviously has the the aesthetic of dreaming and stuff and we can see like the little bubble on the side with more Luigi's coming in because obviously that, that was the theme was just like a huge amount of Luigi's and, and we still have a little weird and sign with this logo but then with Paper Jam we finally get a normal and sign and it looks a lot better because it's not a weird e or the little e is kind of fun and goofy it just doesn't make that much sense having it look like that and and we can see in the original logo or the new logo coming out we keep that and sign and also the accent colors from the initial artwork with like the purple fuse on Mario and Luigi is also represented in the logo itself because if we look at the previous logos there's no use of that accent color you don't see that anywhere else and I think them using that and making its art style more prominent in its logo is a really really nice evolution so I'm gonna say this logo is like a at least like obviously I'm not a huge fan of like the brothership logo itself but that's because we don't know that much about it yet I know there's a 
mix of plants and technology in like a sort of harmonious way. And that isn't really shown in this logo. The electricity might be, but it, that could also be just like golden water because if we're on a boat. And is it brick? Is it wood? I can't really tell. I think it's supposed to be wood, but it looks a lot like brick. So yeah, maybe if that was like more woody looking, it would have been like really, really nice and a really, really cool logo. But still, I love it. I really like it. And also one knock, which I have to give it, is to remove Luigi's little sock because you don't see it in, in Luigi walking there. Obviously, they simplified Mario and Luigi to like look better as a logo, but still like that little sock on Luigi, that was that was prominent there. And then it's it's disappeared. So bring back the socks, Nintendo. And here as well, we have the Japanese logos of I just quickly mentioned these. Super cute, super fun. And they also use like actual numbers to represent the games in, in the series. We had like Mario, Mario and Luigi RPG 1, Mario and Luigi RPG 2. And I like how two is two times two. That's kind of cute. But regardless, this new one is just Mario and Luigi RPG. Looks very, very clean. I also really like how the subtext is showcased here with the big golden logo sort of thing. It just, it just really comes together. It feels super bubbly, super fun. And I really, really like the RPG logo here in the Japanese version a lot more than the Western version. And also what's funny here is they've always used the and symbol, the regular and symbol. I don't know why we use the weird E symbol in, in the Americas, but regardless, pretty cool. Next game, The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Now, you might think this is a great logo. It's super simple. It's super nice. It goes straight to the point. We have the Wand of Gamelon or whatever it's called, the Wand of Wisdom, the Vibe Scepter, whatever you want to call it. It's prominent in the logo. It's the main gimmick of this Zelda game game you know being able to place things everywhere and so knowing that this logo is a does a pretty good job at showing you what the main gameplay mechanic is and telling you that it's a zelda game uh, although i do think that this logo alone could have done something fun to represent that it's zelda's game you know maybe we could have like you know an evaporating link or something or like even call it the legend of link that could have been sort of fun just like I don't know, do something do something cool with it, make sure people know that this is like a Zelda game almost, and could it even create it into a spin-off by calling it The Legend of Link or something? There's a lot of cool ways we could have done with it, but overall, I would say the biggest complaint I have with this logo is that it uses the refined logo system used with Breath of the Wild, and it's sort of interesting because since Breath of the Wild, every Zelda logo has sort of looked like this, this like old, decrepit, falling apart logo, and like, it makes sense for Breath of the Wild because the theme of that game is you're in a post post apocalyptic world and obviously tears of a kingdom is also in a post 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 apocalyptic world but link's awakening i mean that game's in a dream that game is all about like you know i mean it's not all about it sorry if that's a spoiler for you guys but i mean i knew about that before i played the game link's awakening is supposed to be in a dream and you don't really see that in the logo obviously you have the little palm trees in that but this game following that logo and both those logos together just don't really make that much sense compared to those over over logos other logos with tears of a kingdom for a while because those worlds are meant to be decrepit and old this doesn't really make much sense in regards to that i do like how it looks it's very pretty and very easy to read but compared to like the old lo zelda logos with the bright red sort of like a royal t going on with it, it it doesn't carry on with these these new logos and yeah i kind of miss these logos a little bit obviously they're kind of ugly in a little way but just in terms of like the amount of like little effects going on with them but i'd love to see like a modern nintendo's take on this like classic zelda logo could look really really nice so yeah i'm gonna say probably a b b minus in terms of a logo i think it's good okay but just the fact that we've sort of continued that new zelda logo doesn't really make too much sense i'd rather have it be simple right but none of the cracks put into it i think i think this could look really really good if it didn't have all the all of those cracks and stuff and then that would also work well with a, a modernized version of a zelda logo but it doesn't have like you know the underlining theming which makes sense for the other games so yeah b minus okay Okay, here we go. Here's a very fun logo. Super Mario Party Jamboree. First off, random name, but in this logo, it looks nice. Jamboree is like this golden, almost glittery part of the logo. And if you look at the game's art and everything else and its box art and stuff, you can see that like gold is sort of like the theming of it. It has like a lot of gold prominence in it. And so having that represented in the logo with it being, you know, the biggest, bestest, 
Mario Party ever. It works well. It works well. And it's also an evolved form of the Super Mario Party logo, obviously, because it's sort of a sequel. It's sort of weird as well, because Mario Party Superstars went for an entirely different logo. It ditched this new Super Mario Party logo, which Super Mario Party established. I went back to like a just a random use of like the, the standard Mario logo and Mario font. And it works well for that game, but it's just sort of confusing that they, they jumped back with that. I think it's because they were trying to represent that this game was like a compilation or like a celebration of previous Mario parties versus like a brand new game. And it works well for that, but I think going back to this makes sense, but also it, it's, it's just sort of weird. It is pretty cool though. I think also having the super, having the little like glowing bulbs in it sort of like it's a it's a party or like a carnival works really well and i think again the the gold alongside that really sets it as like a, a fun sort of party game for lack of a better term it's also interesting because this logo and also of course super mario party's logo uses like an, a weird variation or like a wider version of the new super mario bros font i'm pretty sure it's just like a more smooth clean straightforward version of that whilst that's like three quarter view logo if that makes sense this is more of like a okay straight on this is how it works but yeah still pretty cool i like it and of course if you compare it to the previous logos mario party has never had consistency with its logos it usually just uses whatever the main mario font is at time of its release so to have it having its own logo i really really like i think that's a that's a good choice um although like the multicolored, like each letter is a different color of a rainbow works really really well and is super fun to look at and very pretty especially with that blue outline around them all i think the new one and especially jamboree just works quite well in terms of establishing it as its own series similar to what mario kart did with mario kart's like wide sort of metallic steel looking logos from mario kart ds and onwards so yeah keep doing this and you know what i love the idea of having retro courses in this game sort of like mario kart that's that's really really fun and yeah this is the game i'm really really excited for probably the most out of all of them so good logo guys good logo i'm gonna give this an s s logo really really fun next luigi's mansion 2 hd now this logo is kind of strange because it can be only used in dark backgrounds i think i don't think it works very very well when it's on white versus the other logos which i think you can plaster them on anything and it works really really well but of course it's supposed to be ghoulish. It's supposed to be ghost. It's supposed to be scary. Ooh. And it's supposed to be at, at nighttime because no one's hunting ghosts in daylight. The HD part of it is also kind of fun because it almost looks like that weird sticker you saw in all HD TVs back in like 2010, 2011. At least that's what it reminds me of. I remember like one of my friends got like an HD like plasma screen or like a 4K or something for the first time. And they have like big golden thing in the corner saying 4K, HD, HDMI and all that crap. That's sort of what I'm reminded with with this part of the logo, but it also, that sort of like squarish look fits very well for modern next level games made Luigi's Mansion titles. And just in terms of like the design of the characters and stuff, it's very like cubic, if that makes sense. It's it's very stylized and making things feel square for some reason. And that, it sort of lowers its spooky factor and that's shown like Luigi's Mansion 2 and Luigi's Mansion 3. And I think that's why some people don't like those games as much to Luigi's Mansion 1. But interestingly enough, the evolution of this logo is super interesting. Obviously, in Luigi's Mansion 1, it was just blue, very ghoulish, very ghosty. And we also had that white outline or, or ghosting outer glow with it, which worked quite well. But Luigi's Mansion 2 and Luigi's Mansion 3 go for this very clear evolution of going to just like bright green to showcase Luigi, obviously, to now in 2019 with Luigi's Mansion 3 logo being like very extruded and a very like glass-like with its uh, aesthetic. And it works well for that game because I think it's like Luigi's Mansion 3, although it's not Luigi's Mansion 3D like it would be with Luigi's Mansion 2 on the 3DS, it still makes the font 3D, which I think is sort of interesting and, and, and works well for that. It'll be like, ooh, it's the third game, the third dimension for the logo. But yeah, overall, nothing crazy to think about with, with the Luigi's Mansion 2 HD logo. I'd give it like maybe a B, you know, it's nothing crazy. I'd say it's a, it's a pretty decent logo. Oh, okay, now the big boy, which everyone loves, it's Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Now this logo, oh, it's got a lot going on in the best way possible. I think what's going on here and especially the word beyond and just like the monolithic hype behind Metroid Prime 4, and this logo delivers in every way. It's obviously supposed to be some sort of black hole, I'm assuming, but that purple glow and then just like the purple theming across Metro Prime 4 really 
works well. Obviously, this logo is meant to be on black because it's supposed to be outer space, you know, darkness with stars in the back and stuff. And that's all the points of where this logo will be used. I doubt I'd see this logo on like a big blue sky or anything like that. Although, even if it was, I think it works really, really well and stands out on any kind of background, especially with the use of the metallic structure holding in the black hole or whatever it could be, the purple hole. It's also interesting how compared to the previous logo of Metroid Prime 4, like this looks so basic and lame compared to this this new one. I think I think they really outdid themselves and really improved upon the previous one. And even if it's not a black hole, it still feels almost like planetary, like a like a Saturn with it with its rings or something. There's a lot of cool just space futuristic visuals used with this logo that I think just go out of the park. Even like the metallic shine or sheen on the Metroid text works really really well. Um just outstanding logo work. I really really like this. I'm gonna say S. I think this is standout logo and it's a pretty decent evolution of previous logos like if we look at metro prime one remaster here it's golden this obviously refers to like the, the first metro prime game because that also had a golden logo and i think then over time it sort of became this more like flatter logo with like the metro prime federation force logo and even the previous metro prime 4 logo um, but it seems like we've gone back to like this 3d look for it and i think even the metro prime 4 logo if i'm not mistaken is the exact same as metro prime remasters like gold logo except for metal instead and even with how prime is set up they change it to prime 4 it just fits very very well with the current remaster of metro prime and i think my theory is in terms of logo design right my logo theory is that we're gonna have something very similar to pikmin 1 and 2 when they came to switch where they got brand new logos and brand new branding with it with the, the pikmin being green and then the number being flowers i think we're gonna get something similar with metro prime series where all the logos are like very very cohesive when we get the eventual metro prime 2 and metro prime 3 remasters on switch because i doubt we're gonna get metroid prime 4 before we get those and that's it those are all the logos i covered in this video because i don't want to do more than four series because i can ramble for ages so let me know what you think if you guys like this video format make sure to give it a thumbs up if you guys want me to review anything else from a graphic design perspective i'd happily do game box arts game characters ui design whatever you guys want comment below and i'm down to do it and if you like me being in live action let me know this is an experiment if you guys hate seeing my ugly mug and just want to see a little cute character in the corner even if he's animated or not animated let me know but i thought i'd experiment for once oh crap i've got to do donkey kong country returns logo it looks good it's donkey kong s plus <laughs>